though some are made, the legends are always born. Some 88 years ago, a child was born, a son was given, a legend was offered. He didn't only rise to the apex of his career early by dint of hard work, but equally raised protests after him who are living out their full potentials. A peerless trailblazer on all fronts, a captain, industry par excellence, a patriotic philanthropist, an ardent lover of God and country.
Philanthropist and a true citizen of Co. The biography of the late Ebenezer Sampon Bidiakon is in two parts. A lifetime narration by the late Ebenezer Bidiakon, as written for the occasion of his 80th birthday, and then followed by the events after his birthday up to the time of his demise. Early life and education. My name is Ebenezer Sampon Bidi Akon. I was born on the 5th of March, 1935. My father was Openi Kwame Sampon of Asen Ebusuyan of Impraisuko. And my mother was Madame Abinay Jemfa 
of Udu PSA Asuna Busuya of Impraisuko, both of blessed memory. In the early days of my life, I stayed with both parents at Impraiso. I started my education at Impraiso Presbyterian Junior Primary School until about the age of 11 years, when in 1946, I joined my senior brother, Akutu Banfo, former manager of Agib Filling Station, with my senior sister, Yadan Sua. He was at the time the UAC manager at Aguna Suedo. I continued with my education at Aguna Suedo Presbyterian School till standard three. Just as I was to continue at the Presbyterian Middle School at Aguna Saba, I was seriously taken ill and I had to return to Mpraiso with my elder sister, Yaha Dansua, in the company of my senior brother, Mr. E.S. Banfo, deceased, who visited us at the time. On my return to Kwon Praiso, I continued my education at the Mpraiso Presbyterian Middle School, where I successfully completed my middle school education in 1952. While schooling at Mpraiso, I can, I can recall let how I assisted my mother, Abna Jimfa, who was a petty trader dealing in foodstuffs like pepper, okra, tiger nuts, palm oil, and other perishables. I usually help by carrying these items to the market each morning and carrying same back in the evening, having to go several rounds each day to the Mpraiso market. Life after school. Unable to further my education after middle school, I decided in 1952 to become a professional driver. I was trained by Master Dakwa, an experienced and caring man who was the most professional driver at the time in Mpraiso. With his wooden bone track, bone shaker, we drove from Mpraiso through towns like Esuboni, Orobon, Nketepa, Oframase, Apesika, all in the eastern region of Ghana. My good service to Master Dakwa paid off, and within a short time, I passed out as a professional driver. My loving parents, Madam Abuna Jimfa, and Papa Sampon, later purchased a Morris Oxford car with registration number AS1744 with which I conveyed passengers from Mpraiso to Nkoko. Because of the care I took of my car, as well as my professionalism, passengers would always prefer waiting for me rather than join other vehicles. I was able to make some good sales and also ensure that my car was neat and well polished for the comfort of my passengers. The cleaning sometimes was assisted by my younger sister, Mrs. Nkrumah Yebua, Queen Elizabeth, and my late junior brother, E.S. Meku. This earned me the nickname, Eyefe. For these were the words I used to admire my car after cleaning and polishing. Citizens and commuters in Impraisu Township would often wait until the cab driver, Ayefe, arrives, giving me more commuters. My senior brother, E.S. Banfo, deceased, a businessman, asked me to join him in, in Accra. Before moving to Accra, I sold my vehicle, and in addition, my mother, Bnajinfa, added some money to raise a seed capital. I left in Priso with mixed feelings having to leave my dear mother, Abuna Jemfa, and old grandmother, Akusia Amwafua, a.k.a. Awo, Akusia Denta, behind. I assured them I would take good care of myself and support them whilst in Accra. In addition, I promised to rebuild their family house where we were staying at the time, if God blessed me through their prayers. During my stay with E.S. Banfo at Adabraka, Amugi Avenue, Accra, 
He made me understudy him in his canvassing and supply business. He initially introduced me to the passbook system at GB Olivant and got me a passbook. My remuneration was on commission basis, dealing in medicines like omega oil, ointments like Enkaka Epa, general goods and provisions. I supplied several supermarkets like Danawi and the like. The commission at the time for medicines was 5%, and that for provision and cosmetics was 2.5%. I also dealt with companies like Swiss African Trading Company, SAT, Partisan Zoconis, PZ, Ghana National Trading Company, GNTC. Due to my hard work, I was given the opportunity to be a key promoter of Prudent Toothpaste for GB Olivant. In furtherance to this, I was offered and allotted a shop by GB Olivant around Granville Avenue and also on the station road at Okanshi, Accra, which enabled me to sell more of the company's products and other general goods. I was initially assisted at the shop by my wife, Grace Asantua Bidiakum, and two boys, Nkansa and Jonathan. Kofi Bedu, my junior brother, joined me after completing school in 1966. Later, I acquired a chemical seller's license and within four years turned it into a pharmacy. My junior brother, Kofi Bedu, alias Kofisko, traveled long distances, trekking, as it was called then, for the business. He sometimes had to trek to Rara, KJB, Yasekain, and many other districts and towns to supply and market medicines. The genesis of Bidiakum Brothers Pharmacy Limited. I recollect that in the 1970s, during the import license regime, where import licenses were allocated through the Ministry of Trade and Industry, I went into the importation and distribution of medicines, as well as provisions, hardware, and fishing nets. Bidiaku Brothers Pharmacy Limited was a pharmacy at Okanshi, Accra, within the GB Olivant building. I established additional shops at Nkoko and finally Kwame Nkrumah Circle. The Circle branch exists till today and was until recently managed by my wife, Margaret Bidiaku. In addition, I had other ventures as poultry and piggery farms at Nkoko, managed by my nephew, Kusia Siedu, and concrete block production at Nkoko. I was baptized by the Reverend Osofu Kwafu in 1946 at the Price Presbyterian Church, and confirmed by Reverend Osofu Amachi, the Presbyterian pastor at Nkwetia Kwo at the time. Due to my love for the work and things of God, I supported the church's activities in diverse ways. In Accra, where I attended the Alajo Presby Church, God gave me the ability and with the permission of the presbytery to expand and renovate the entire church building. This work is visible to date to the glory of God. My wife, Elizabeth Abuna Amwafua, invited me to join the Royal House Chapel. I fellowshiped with them for some years and was instrumental in starting a branch at Mpraisuko in the residence of my uncle, Kwekunturi. Later, like the prodigal son, I returned to the Presbyterian Church. Currently, I fellowship with our Debraka Official Town Presby Church, Accra, and Trinity Presby Church in Price Uko, social responsibility. I say this as a sort of encouragement to others, knowing well that if God is not with you, you cannot fulfill your God-given purpose in life. To the glory of God, at a tender age, I was able to put up a three-floor building at Kowin Price to accommodate my mother and some siblings. And in addition, I was able to invite and accommodate the Ghana Commercial Bank to do business at Price to Kow on the Kow Ridge. This was the first bank to serve the people of Kow Ridge. The said building subsequently housed GN Bank in Price of Kow. I also recall 
supporting the Impriso Township with my generator to power the street lights for the township along the main roads leading to Obomin, Bepong, Atibi, and Inquintia at the time, when there was no power to supply, no power supply from the national grid. I offered a TB hospital a standard credit on all medicines supplied given to the hospital, and in some instances donated free medicines to enable them to operate smoothly. In addition, I gave various support to the hospital, including repairing their hospital ambulance by purchasing a new engine from Bartholomew to fix it. During this time, during the time of Dr. Bewa, the administrative head of the hospital, my brother-in-law, Ms. Nkrumah Ebua, and I jointly provided the needed finance to support and install mortuary equipment for the hospital. On my usual visits and supply to the hospital, I noticed that due to the rains, which were rampant in Po, the nurses and attendants were unable to attend to emergencies at, the night, at night, as some nurses on duty had to travel over long distances. This burdened my heart, and with God's inspiration, I was encouraged to take some action. I contacted the then Etibihine, Anna Santi Akroku, Mr. Babu, a friend, who made land available to me, and I decided to put up nurses and attendance quarters and accommodation to take care of these needs, free of rent for over 40 years, until recently when they offered to make a token fee. These buildings currently house the nurses and some attendants at the TBA Government Hospital, Quill South Government Hospital, Quill. My assistant to Alajo Township and community was recognized by the city authorities of Accra. Honorable E.T. Mensah, the then Accra, Mayor of Accra, and the city council named the main street of Alajo after my good self. Bidiaku Street in recognition of my support to the city of Accra. I also took an interest in the education of my children as well as some of my nephews and nieces. I recollect in one instance when 11 wards made up of 10 of my children and their nephew were admitted into Impriso Secondary School in the same year, Bidiaku 11 a slogan with which the students call them. I believe all these activities were the doing of the good Lord Yahweh. Certainly we would meet again in the bosom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mr. Bediakon, at the time of his death, left behind four widows. Madam Grace Asantua, Madam Elizabeth Amorfa Bediakon deceased, Madam Margaret Awo, Madam Comfort Nyanko and deceased. 47 children and 157 grandchildren. We are grateful to God Almighty, Yahweh, for seeing him through his life journey. God be with you to be meet again. Mr. Bidiaku, may God keep your soul. Sleep well, Papa. The year, the effort. Amen. We are heartbroken with so much sadness to realize that today is the very last day to say goodbye to a man we have been with for so many years. A man of love, a man of caring disposition, a man of sympathy and generosity. And if there's any attributes left to describe him, he was a man of dreams. It is great to see so many people from all walks of life gathered here in harmony today to help us pay our last respect for this good man. It is certain that we all have one thing in common, our admiration of a man who worked very hard to fulfill the dreams of his family and many others. That man, of course, is Ebenezer Sampon Bidiakon. As we bid you farewell, we know your legacy of kindness, devotion, and laughter lives in our hearts. Though you may no longer be by our side, 
we know your spirit will forever guide and protect us. We take comfort from the psalmist at Psalms 34, verses 18, which reads, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. In this difficult time, may your love and faith carry us through. We miss you, Mr. Bediakon. We love you. May you find rest in the bosom of the Lord. Today that he's here, we just want to let him know that we remember him teaching us the way of the Lord, and we appreciate him. Yeah, tribute of the children i'm reverend hazel jim fabidia Cohn, the lead pastor of royal house chapel new jersey in the u.s of a a colossus patriot goes home though some are made legends are always born some 88 years ago a child was born a son was given a legend was offered though some are made Legends are always born. Some 88 years ago, a child was born, a son was given, and a legend was offered. He didn't only rise to the apex of his career early by dint of hard work, but equally raised protests after him who are living out their full potentials. That batch together with the seniors nicknamed Bediako 11, a complete football team. Coincidentally, Papa owned a public football fan club in Kweu, known in, at that time as Bediako Stars, even before emergency of Okwo United fan club. He encouraged and ensured that those of us who were prepared to go to school to attain the highest level in education, were given the necessary push. We were all over at Presec, Legon, St. Peter's, Adisadel College, Achimoda School, and Priceu Secondary School, in Koko Secondary, Laboni Secondary School, Orali Secondary School, Oboko Ridge Secondary School, Tema Secondary School, Takrade Secondary Technical School, KNUST, University of Legon, University of Cape Coast, and schools abroad. Papa was blessed with pharmacists, medical doctors, engineers, captains of industries, entrepreneurs, and ministers of gospel that I'm glad to be one. The illustrious sons and daughters he raised, not only in the pharmaceutical but all other fields of endeavor as well, are undeniable proof of his towering status as a patriot. Papa was very industrious. When it came to business, we all took the spirit of his business acumen under the directives of our father, our senior brother, Enes Bediako Sampon, being the first son, was able to understudy his business ideas, which the younger ones also benefited from due to the experience he had acquired. Most of us developed the love for the pharmaceutical business because Papa excelled in that industry. Through Papa's direction, we can proudly say we have created a niche for ourselves when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry. 
Papa, as you were always called, you taught us to always approach things with determination, open-mindedness, and to remain truthful under any circumstances. One of the priceless legacy you have left behind is the unity you have instilled in us. You brought us close to each other. We lived under one roof, ate together from one bowl, steadied under each other's feet, and drank a bond of unity. Your nurturing and guidance, Papa, never discriminated. He took care of us all equally. <laughs> During Christmas and other festivities, Papa could buy the same cloth for all his children to sew. It was always interesting to see about 20 of us wearing the same cloth with the same Sakura headed shape. Papa would also send us to our grandparents at Quell JJT and Wawase where we went farming, came back to do household chores, and many other exposures in the village we no doubt helped us in the formative stages of our lives. Papa also financed medical bills so our mothers were not worried whenever we got ill. All they had to do was just take us to the designated clinic and we would be looked after whether Papa was in town or not. His nieces and nephews had the same opportunities as his children under his care. One mark to define Papa as a godsend was during 1983 catastrophic season in Ghana. The Almighty had made Papa go ahead two years earlier into commercial fishing poultry and pig farming and we never faced shortage but rather abundance of some your legacy will endure as your works follow after you surely your works will come before the good lord as everlasting memorial papa even though we are mourning your passing we take consolation from the fact that we will see you again, as the Bible has assured us in us, 24:15. That says, I have hope toward God, which these men also look forward to, that there is going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the righteous. Revelation 20, 11, 12 reads, Then I saw a great white throne, and the one seated on it, as and heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And there were open books, and one of them was the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their deeds, as recorded in the books. Farewell, the great man. Farewell, the great patriot. Farewell, the great mentor. Beloved Papa, Papa was present and showered his blessings on our marriages. He was so concerned about the welfare of his in-laws and grandchildren such that whenever any of us found ourselves in a difficult situation, Papa held us in his prayers. Papa was very proud of his grandchildren and encouraged all his children to each name their first child after him, whether male or female. He was blessed to see and interact with over 150 grandchildren before his painful demise. He raised his children very well and gave us sons and daughters who worked very hard to take care of their families. His legacy in the pharmacy business is a testimony for all to see and hear about. This is evidenced in his children's businesses. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 9, 
1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58, we are reminded that our lives are like rivers which flow into the seas and get swallowed up, such as death, the final sea. The leveler of all human destinies, in which we all shall end. Our dear Papa, you will dearly be missed, but we are thankful for the hope of seeing you again one day. We are comforted that you have died in the Lord, whom you always spoke to us about. Papa, you always mentioned the goodness of God and how he has protected and preserved your entire household, not to mention the many accidents the Lord had delivered you from in many travels. In your last moments, we could sense a presence and we knew you were ready to go to your maker. That is why we join our spouses in saying that should not be proud for laying its icy hands on you. For one short sleep passed, and Papa wakes up eternally. Papa, may God grant you his living grace. Papa, hofe, 90 year. Papa, Papa, be demri He was cherished as a brother, a father, a friend, and a beloved grandfather. As we all gathered here to finally lay him to rest, we remember all the different roles he played in our lives. He was a man of few words, but of immense accomplishment. Our precious grandfather, it was always a great privilege and joy to be in your presence. Any opportunity we got, we would usually gather around you and get a hug and receive blessings from you. At special events such as your birthdays, we would each come with our parents, who was either a son or daughter, to hug you and say hello as you sat at the high table. At one of those special locations, I clearly remember, we actually queued, because 157 years, what also We actually queued because of the great number of us to get our hugs and see our revered and beloved grandfather, Papa. Death is a scary thing, an unpredictable event that often takes the most beautiful of souls. Indeed, we share tears at the thought that we no longer have the pleasure of being able to see your smiling face. Yet, we know that although you do not stand with us physically, you will continue to watch over us, over all of us. The wisdom you have shared and the memories we all had, the blessings of experience with you are our treasures that we will continually hold in our hearts. My Angelo once said, if you are going to live, if you are going to live, leave a legacy. Make a mark on the world that can't be erased. And that is exactly what you did. The great mark you left behind is both inspirational and motivational. But Papa, your story does not end here. For we, your grandchildren, will carry on this legacy and hold the memory of your story in our hearts. Rest well, our precious grandfather. Rest well, Papa, for you have truly fought well, as your name depicts, Bediako. Thank you. The memorial tribute of Dasebre Akwama Japan the second Kwahene to, to the honor of Mr. Ebenezer Sampon Bidiakon, a God-fearing and philanthropist. O oh death, where is thy sting? O oh grave, where is thy glory? Thanks be to God who giveth us the glory over death through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55 to 57. Today we gather here in solemnity to bid farewell and give reverence to a remarkable son of Okomai, a rare gem, 
Mr. Ebenezer Sampon Bidiakon, whose life has been an illustrious tapestry of achievements and profound contributions to the growth and development of Opawman, Ghana, and beyond. Mr. Sampon Bidiakon, a visionary filled with fortitude and resilience, was blessed with the gift of 57 children, among whom are the players, all of the leading players in the pharmaceutical industry, East uh, NS Chemist, Pedita, East Contaminants, Pels and Taps, Ebenezer Pharmacy, Big Maron, just to name a few. His beneficence extended far beyond the boundaries of his family, reaching into the lives of many. In 1959, he constructed a three-story office complex at Empriso to facilitate in the establishment of the first Ghana Commercial Bank branch in Quo. During the same era, when the national electricity grid had, hadn't been extended, the coral ridge, he single-handedly installed and powered by electric generator lights along the streets of Empraisu through Obo, Suboni, and Mkwetia. In the history of Ghana, between 1971 and 1972, there was dev devastating farming which shook the foundations of the country. Kwaumai found solace and cushioning when Mr. Bidiaku generously donated several bags of maize to the Kwao Government Hospital at TBA to feed patients. Continuing onwards, there was a dire need for accommodation for nurses at the same hospital. Mr. Bidiaku, as usual, remedied the challenge. Indeed, he constructed nurses' quarters ensuring that the medical professionals had decent accommodation. In 1971, Mr. Bidiakun championed the establishment of the nursing and midwifery training school at TBA. The institution was commissioned by the late General Ignatius Kutua Champo, the then head of state of Ghana. The outputs of the training school has surely strengthened the healthcare system in Ghana as a whole. Subsequently, when a TBA hospital was faced with financial turmoil, Mr. Bidiaku, in response to a clarion call, stepped forward and once again furnished the TBA government hospital with much needed medications. This and several selfless acts earned him the meritorious recognition at the second awards night at the International Training Center ATCC organized by the late Dasabre Akua Moaboate II Kwauhene. Mr. Bidiakun's legacy extended beyond healthcare into sports. In fact, he was the visionary who led to the establishment of the esteemed Kwa Bidiakun Stars Football Club. As we bid farewell to this nobleman, let us hold on strongly to his legacies, remembering the profound impact he had on our lives. Mr. Bidiakon Sampon, or Mr. Sampon Bidiakon, excuse me, his name shall forever be engraved in the annals of Okwaumai by those excellences of his character, benevolence, and charity. We indeed honor him for a life well lived. Demi Fredrie, Demi Fredrie, Demi Fredrie, Omambapa, the year. Medamas. Namia ni unu kwe, waya adia papa no waya adwa bobrapa because enamlo su ama wachuni ne ba Mr Nesbedi akosampo. I'm a papa in so I had him up in so it's me a pharmacy. Can see like with a lot of branches I employ. It's your new so far, say, and so and I'm papa no so, so, yes, you're what you're in like, like you're feeling okay because 
Mr. Ernest, I see you, or you're a very good person. You see me, and you know, you're the name I see. Say, say, Papa, no, I'll be Bob Brown. In fact, we're Bob Brown. And yesterday, I'm saying, I'm from the Christ. Yeah, na na so funny, na draw, na I'm saying, so shy. I hear you, Mama, and Mama, and you. Eh, opening some pumbi di akudi. Say, be where you're now, you're Jack. Now, do do not share no subobra, na sabita fracture, no, and yet be dear Kufor no qua, in na a yenema. A more dear work for my disabled Yakin can be mutibi, said to be a Ocinesis Cortez, na higher away, can near the back room, who are why your name be brave. Now, share more dear boy, or more, and free moon poke. Yang con can cotton, sabita fracture, a pattern, no one any different would drive back.
Asante to the so Nana Asafuaka Nana Gasso. I do for as a prayer. As a As a church in the so The Barnes I don't tell me about it. Now, I buy it. 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 I Private sector businessman. We are not talking. We are not. 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 We no Private for now. One more, one more for sure. I'm going to stop there. I'm